All right, so in the last lecture, we finished up the, the skinning and we made the model actually move with the bones. So now we have this, this nice setup here. And the only thing missing now is the gun model and the gun rig. So that's what we're going to do in this lecture. We are going to import the gun and set it up and make sure that it works with this rig. So let's go ahead and do that. So first, switch to object mode. And we need to make sure that the, the 3D cursor is centered, as usual. So <laughs> make sure that it's centered by pressing Shift S and 1. And what we want to do now is we want to append uh, the gun rig from, from the gun rig file in, in Blender. And basically what appending is, it's sort of like well, it's basically like importing, but it's just like making a copy from that scene. So we can actually copy it from the, the gun scene and add it to this scene instead. So let's go ahead and do that. So go to File and choose Append. And let's locate our, our gun file, our gun scene, actually. So it's in Section 2 and in Lecture uh, 2.3. And let's double click on this scene here, finishing up the gun rig. And go to objects, because the, the armature is an object. And let's choose the gun, which is the gun model. So select this one and press append. And this is gonna import the gun, it's gonna import the gun rig and for some reason it's also going to import the the custom bone shapes so we <laughs> we can start by deleting the custom bone shapes we don't really need those um, so we can just select them here in the outliner and choose delete right uh, right click and choose delete oh we actually need them never mind <laughs> Um, let's actually rename them then. Let's call them gun cube shape one and gun cube shape two and gun sphere shape. And let's select these. So control click, select all of these new uh, shapes, these ones, and press M and let's move them to the custom bone shapes collection like that so now we still have the the gun shapes here which is good we want to keep those and as we can see we now have the gun rig as a separate object so we have the arms rig uh, and we have the gun rig and the the benefit of this approach especially for uh, making games it's usually a better idea to keep the gun rig separate and just having the arms rig as kind of like their own object, right? Because if, um, let's say you want to do like some weapon switching or you want to, you know, s swap out the weapon model or, or whatever, it's it's usually easier to keep it a separate rig. And um, yeah, it, it works fairly well. There are some limitations to this, but um, for the most part, it works really well. So um, yeah. And let's select the, the gun rig the rig itself in object mode and let's move it forward a bit so just on the y-axis move it you can put it at like 1.5 so just uh, sort of in front of the player like this and we don't need to to apply the transform or anything it, it it's it's fine if it's like this and the next step is to actually make the, the arms interact with the weapon. And the way we can do this is we can actually use a constraint on the hands and we can constrain the hands to the weapon root bone so that if we move the weapon, the, the arms are gonna follow. And I usually think that this is the best approach when animation uh, animating because it's, it's usually, it feels a bit nicer to have like the hand follow the gun and not the other way around. And I feel like you have a bit more control over the motion and uh, how it looks. So 
let's select the arm rig and go into post mode and we want the right hand to be parented to the, the actual gun uh, root so select this one the right hand and go to the constraints and add a child of constraint and set the target to the gun rig and it's gonna pop like this or, or move or become weird and that's fine it, it, it happens and uh, to fix that just choose uh, set inverse like that and it's gonna pop back and let's pick the gun root bone okay and <laughs> set inverse again fix that and now if we move go back into object mode select the gun rig and post mode we can actually see that the the right hand uh, perfectly follows the gun so if we were to place place the hand in like a pose so kind of like holding the weapon I'm just gonna make a real quick pose here And now if we actually move um, the gun rig in post mode, we can see that it follows perfectly, which is nice. That's, per that's beautiful, which is great. And um, especially when making the fire animation, it's really useful to have the, to animate the gun itself. So you can kind of like, you know, do this kind of motion. You can rotate it, stuff like that. Um, yeah. Let's just go ahead and reset pose. And I also noticed there's an issue with the thumb bone here. Okay, so there's an issue with the top bone here that it's not being rotated. I wonder if it's the same here. Nope. Okay, so there's, there's an issue with the top bone on the thumb here. It's not being rotated. So let's go and check why that might be. So let's go back to the the layer with the, the deform bones. Let's select this one and check. Um, hmm. Okay, you know what? It's actually a problem with the skinning. So I, I actually haven't skinned this bone it, because it's rotating correctly, but I haven't actually skinned the bone through the mesh. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's fix that. I mean, let's just select the tip here and we can actually check. So this is actually a good example of some kind of problem solving here. So if this hap happens to you, if the, if the bones aren't really moving some parts of the model, um, you can always go and check the vertex groups. And so let's check your thumb O3 isn't moving. So let's check that select this one and then choose select okay we can see that there's nothing nothing selected which means that it's not assigned so let's go ahead and assign it select it and then press assign and let's go back and test it okay so that was the problem it should be all good now and now we have assigned the right hand to the gun and we also want to assign the left hand but to the mag instead so when we w when we move the mag bone we want the left hand to follow as well so we can kind of do the whole take out mag motion and put it put the mag back in so let's select the the left hand uh, controller and add a child of constraint and set the target to the gun rig as before and the bone to mag and, <laughs> and fix this this horrible issue by cli clicking the set inverse all right so now if we make another pose simple pose here let's just place the hand on the mag And th this 
is a great post, by the way. Um, this is totally how you hold a gun in real life. I mean, yeah. Let's let's select the gun in post mode as well, and let's rotate it. And as we can see, the the arms, both hands, are now following the gun. And if we remove the mag, we can see that the left hand is following, which is very good. That's what we want. And and the right hand is still following the gun. Um, yeah. So let's just go ahead and reset that pose. And let's reset this pose because that's it's not very good. <laughs> so let's reset that. And yeah, that's that's it. We have a uh, our full setup here, and we have the gun. We have the hands linked to the gun, and the only thing missing now is some some cool animations. And that's what we're going to be doing in the next section. So. Section three is is finished now. We got the, the working rig, we got the working gun rig, and uh, we got the constraints all set up. And yeah, in the next section, we're gonna start setting up the animation workspace and uh, uh, create some cool animations. So yeah, I'll see you in the next section. Bye-bye.